Alright guys, welcome to Algebra 1B. No. Take 2. Alright guys, welcome to Algebra... Take... Alright guys, good afternoon. Welcome to Algebra 1. Uh, today we're just going to start off kind of slow with talking about addition and subtraction using some counting chips. So what you'll need is two of something. You'll need two of, you know, maybe you've got lucky charms. Maybe you want to use the charms and the, so the marshmallows and the little Rice Krispie looking type things. Or you've got whole grain Cheerios or multi-grain Cheerios and you want to use the, the dark brown Cheerios and the light brown Cheerios. Uh, or maybe you've got some, I don't know, pens and pencils or I've got these double-sided counting chips. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about representing zero with counting chips. And zero is a pretty groundbreaking idea. Uh, it wasn't around for a long time because you don't just go up to people and say, you know, hi, I'm Mr. Murphy. I have zero alpacas in my pocket right now. We just didn't talk about zero. That would be a weird thing to do. We didn't talk about what we didn't have. Um, but at some point, we needed the number zero. So the, uh, the number zero came out of Middle Eastern mathematics. So here is one way that I could represent the number zero. If, the, uh, if these black magnets are my positive ones, and these white mag magnets are the negatives, so let's make these positive and negative numbers. So if I had a positive one and a negative one, then we know that 1 minus 1 would just be 0. So this is one way that I can represent 0. I could also represent 0 as 2 minus 2, or 3 minus 3, and so on and so forth. Anytime I've got you know, 3 positives and 3 negatives, and I could match these up, you know, these are ways that I can represent the number 0 with my counting chips or with your lucky charms, or your pens and pencils, or, or whatever it is you're using. Uh, another thing you could do is if you take two different colored post-it notes. So let's say I've got a, a green post-it and a, a pink post-it. I'm going to use pink and blue. That's what I've got right now. All right, so let's say I've got a pink post-it and a blue post-it. You could just you know, rip these up into a bunch of little different pieces, and you could have the same idea. You know, here are my positive, positive ones. This doesn't have any stickies on it. And here are my negative ones. And you could rip these up into even smaller pieces. Uh, just as long as you've got two different colors of something or two different items that you can represent positive and negative with, positive and negative one, that's all that matters. So that's what you need for right now. So here are a bunch of different ways that I can represent zero. I've got four minus four or three minus three or positive two and minus 2 or negative 2, and here I've got a positive one and a negative one. And when I combine those things, I get 0. So you can fill out on your piece of paper just a sentence or two about how you can represent the number 0 with counting chips. Just making sure that you identify that as long as you have the same number of positive and negative chips, then you are representing zero because you have positive one minus one, which is zero, or positive two minus two. You get the picture. So what we're going to do here is we're going to show the following numbers with our counting chips. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move my camera over to this desk, and we're going to show those three numbers, so eight, five, and seven. Let's show the numbers 8, 5, and 7. So I'm going to say that red is negative, 
and yellow is positive. So here are all my negative chips on the left. Here are all my positive chips on the right. And of course, these are all reversible, so I could just flip them over. So we've got negative chips and positive chips. And I want to make the numbers, let's look at our slide again. I want to make the numbers 8, 5, and 7. So what I could do is if these are negative and these are positive, I could take 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That would be one way, one way to represent 8. But what if I added this? Well, what is, what is this? I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have 8 chips here. But what did we say this represents? What do these two chips represent? If I have plus one and minus one. Well, one minus one is zero. So this is like saying zero plus eight. So zero plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I could also add another zero. You know, 0 plus 0 plus 8 is still 8. And I could add another 0 and have 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So these are some different ways of representing 8. And then if I want to represent 5, I could just take 3 positives away. So now I have sorry, three positives away. So now I have zero plus zero plus zero plus one, two, three, four, five. Or if I want to represent seven, I could have, let's say zero plus zero plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So zero plus seven is seven, that's the third number I want to represent. Or I could just have zero plus seven, or I could just have seven. So all of these are great ways of representing the number seven. All of them work, and that's how we can represent these numbers with our number chips. So we represented these numbers with our number chips. We talked about what is zero. This, as long as I have you know, two minus two, or three minus three, or four minus four, as long as I have the same number of positives and negatives, then I know that I have zero. If I have eight dollars and I owe eight dollars, I really have zero dollars. Or if I have, you know, $40,000, but I am $40,000 in debt, then in reality, I have absolutely no money at all. So let's look at our next slide. I want to show 3 plus 7 with counting chips. So I'm going to start with 3, and I need to add 7 chips. So let's... Let's go back to our counting chips over here. I'm going to start with 3, and I want to add 7. So I've got 3 chips, and I'm just going to add 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm just going to add 7 chips, and then we can count all these up. So I could count 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. I would have 10 chips. 
I'd like you to pause the video and think about some other ways that we could represent three when we started out. So here I could represent three as three plus zero, or I could have three plus zero plus zero, so three plus zero plus zero, because these each have plus one and minus one. If I combine positive and negative one, I get zero. So I could have zero plus zero plus zero plus three, or just zero plus zero plus three, or just zero plus three. I could even leave it as just three. So these are all different ways of representing three. And then I could add seven. So I could have that just like I did at the beginning, or I could have zero plus three plus seven, or zero plus zero plus three, and then plus seven. So these are all different ways of representing three plus seven, because these are all zero, I could take them away, it wouldn't change the problem. So adding zero to anything does not change its value. So let's go back to our board then. We did three plus seven. And let's try to think of a word problem that we could make with this. So let's say, uh, here's an example. Maybe I have three homework assignments. And my teachers give me seven more. And I just need to represent three plus seven. So I'm just saying three plus seven, maybe I have three homework assignments and my teachers give me seven more homework assignments. So that's one example. You can't use that example now, but you have something to go off of uh, when I'm asking you to write this down on your separate piece of paper, something like that for tomorrow. So that's uh, our idea with number of chips. We've got the idea of zero being plus one, minus one, or plus two, minus two, uh, or something of that nature. Now let's look at subtracting. So I want to show the number 9, and then I want to show 9 minus 5. And that's where we're going to end up for today. So I'm going to show the number 9. Let's see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. And I wanted to show the problem 9 minus 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 9 and there are a couple ways that I could show minus 5. I could just take away 5 which is sort of our traditional understanding. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I could take 9 minus 5 so take away 5 positives. But let's look at the problem from a slightly different perspective. So the, here's my nine again. I made nine. Let's look at this problem from a slightly different perspective. We have a positive nine here, so we have a positive nine minus five. Well, let's look at these as individual pieces. We have our positive nine that was those nine yellow chips that you just saw. But then I'm also including 
this right here. And what is that? Well, we could think of it as 9 minus 5, or you could think of it as 9, and then you're going to add negative 5 chips. Or you could add 5 negative chips. So we could add 5 negative chips. Let's add 5 negative chips. So here I've got five negative chips. And I want you to think about what does this pair stand for if I have positive one and negative one? What number does that pair of chips represent? Well, if that represents zero, one minus one is zero, then what's, what is that? Well, that's zero. And that's zero. And this is zero. And here's another zero. And another zero. So I have zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero, which is what? Well, that's just zero. And if this is nothing, if this is zero right here, then I have zero plus. One, two, three, four. So this would be a different way of representing nine minus five, where we had nine chips to start off with, and then we included negative five. So we did a positive nine, and then minus five. So those are two different ways of looking at 9 minus 5. And we can make a word problem to go with this as well. So maybe you know, instead of adding homework assignments, uh, I'm finishing homework assignments. Maybe I, I started with 9 and I finished 5. So those are, those are our big ideas for those are our big ideas for today's class, or tomorrow's class really, where we're going to be talking about uh, how to represent zero with number chips and getting a, a sense again of, of what do these expressions mean, this 9 minus 5 or 3 plus 7, what does that mean and how can we contextualize that? So we're going to start our homework tomorrow in class. We'll start with uh, a brief overview of, of what this is. So, so we're going to start. So we're going to do our homework tomorrow in class. Make sure that you have this Google slide up and your counting chips and a piece of paper with uh, with your work written on it. So make. So we're going to do our homework in class. So we're going to do our homework in class. So tomorrow we will be doing our homework in class together. Uh, we'll start off with this as a whole group. Make sure that you bring your pen or pencil, your scratch paper with your work on it. Today, I want you to bring something that you could use, you know, whether it's uh, torn up pieces of different colored post-it notes, or uh, Lucky Charms, or these counting chips, if you have any. Uh, you could bring, I don't know, different colored tickets, if you have tickets. All right, so tomorrow we're going to start with our homework. And I want you guys to bring your pen or pencil, your scratch piece of paper that you've been doing this work on so far. I want you to have the Google Slides presentation up. And I want you to have something that you can use to count. So whether it's torn up bits of post-it notes, or pens and pencils that are different colors, or uh, Legos, maybe you have Lucky Charms, you want to use the charms and the marshmallows, 
or maybe you actually have counting chips. Uh, whichever is going to work for you, just make sure you have something where you can represent a positive one and a negative one uh, in our Zoom meeting tomorrow. So please feel free to email me with any questions you have, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Thanks, guys.